Is Crown Castle a deep value or a possible dividend trap? We're going to analyze Crown Castle stock ticker CCI like Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. We're going to use the select six analysis to look at the business numbers that are the most telling. Then we will estimate three different fair values for Crown Castle. You're going to want to watch till the end of the video because when we put these together and give our rating, it may surprise you. Along the way, there's going to be a key bonus metric. It just might be the tipping point when analyzing Crown Castle for your stock portfolio. So is Crown Castle a potential opportunity? Right now, Crown Castle trades for $95.62 per share. This year has been rough on the business. Their stock price is down 31%, while the S&P 500 is up more than 10%. Thankfully, that's not all for shareholders. Right now, Crown Castle pays a huge market-beating 6.47% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield is added to their returns in their stock. Similar to a lot of other REITs, Crown Castle stock is way down this year. In the last five years, their stock price is down 14%. They beat the market until about the end of 2022. In the last 10 years, it's a different story. They're compounding at around 3%. They performed pretty neck and neck with the market over this time, again until about the end of 2022. When we go back all the way before the global financial crisis, Crown Castle stock has actually beat the market. They compound at 9.5%. Even with their recent declines, they're beating the market over this time. And as a real estate investment trust, keep in mind that they pay out more than 90% of their earnings as dividends to shareholders. They've had an above average dividend yield that makes this outperformance even better. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Crown Castle? Right now, the company trades just $10 above their 52-week low. They trade $58 below their 52-week high. Not a lot of their shares are sold short. And how big is Crown Castle? They have a $41.5 billion market cap. What does the company do? Crown Castle International owns and leases roughly 40,000 cell towers in the United States. It also owns more than 85,000 route miles of fiber. It leases space on its towers to wireless service providers, which install equipment on the towers to support their wireless networks. The company's fiber is primarily leased by wireless service providers to set up small cell network infrastructure and by enterprises for their internal connection needs. Crown Castle's towers and fiber are predominantly located in the largest U.S. cities. The company has a very concentrated customer base, with more than 70% of its revenue coming from the big three U.S. mobile carriers. Crown Castle operates as a real estate investment trust. Who owns Crown Castle? There are three super investors with positions in the business. These include Torrey Funds, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust, and Berkshire Hathaway board member Chris Davis. That's not a ton of ownership by super investors, and these are small percentages of their portfolios. Those are still some interesting names. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into their numbers. Metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 9%. If this is the case for a REIT, this likely leads to long-term outperformance. Crown Castle has increased their returns on capital over this time. They earned 5% returns in 2018. In 2022, they earned around 7% returns. A normal REIT earns about 6% returns on capital, and Crown Castle is just a little below that average. They earned 5.4% returns in a given year. That's down from the benchmark we want. It's an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we want growth in their sales and their cash from operations. These both need to be up for it to be a check. In the last five years up until today, Crown Castle has grown their sales by 32%. They had $7 billion in sales in 2022. They've also grown their cash from operations, which is a more conservative way of looking at a REIT than their funds from operations or FFO. That's a common metric for REITs, but it's a little looser. Their cash from operations have grown by 24%. With both of these up, it's our first check of the day on metric number two. In our third metric, we want their shares outstanding to be decreasing. Crown Castle has proven that in the long term, they've outperformed the market. With a track record like this, we don't want a high quality company to be diluting shareholders and decreasing ownership in the company. Crown Castle has increased their shares outstanding. They've grown these by about 5%. That's not necessarily out of the ordinary for REITs but it is something that we'd rather not see. REITs tend not to be internally funded. They primarily rely on external sources of funding, like issuing equity or issuing debt. Most REITs are no strangers to acquisitions, and this seems to be the case for Crown Castle here. While it's not the worst dolution we've seen, we'd rather not see it. It's an X on metric number three. Metric number four puts our last couple of metrics together. We want cash flow per share growth. 
In this time, the company's cash from operations have grown faster than their shares outstanding. This means their cash flows per share are up. It's a check on our fourth metric. So far to recap, we're split evenly. We have two checks and two X's for Crown Castle. Before we look at the company's balance sheet and get into our valuation estimates, how about we check in on our bonus? Right now, Crown Castle pays a huge 6.47% dividend yield, but is this safe and can this grow in the future? That's what we want to figure out through our bonus. We want their dividends to be supported by their cash flows. That actually has not been the case in any of these five years, and it's not the case today. This means Crown Castle has had other sources of funding to grow their dividend. This likely isn't the greatest capital allocation strategy for management. Still, the company's cash flows per share and their dividends per share have both grown. With the increase in the cost of debt and a high dividend yield that's not fully supported by their cash flows, this could be responsible for some of investors' hesitation in the company. It's an X on our bonus. In recessions, it's businesses with too much debt that can have the biggest losses and even go broke. In metric number five, we want their net debt to be below the sum of their cash from operations in their last five years. Real estate investment trusts can usually take on quite a bit of leverage in their business. This is because they actually have these physical assets that can back up their debt loads. Real estate can typically be levered at 70% or more of asset value. As the price of debt was pretty low during most of these years, the company has grown their debt by quite a bit. They had $16.5 billion of net debt in 2018. They ended last year with $27.8 billion in net debt, and today they have $28.6 billion. This could be troublesome as the cost of debt for real estate has skyrocketed in the last couple of years. In this time when we add up their cash from operations, they've only produced $13.9 billion. While that's a more conservative metric and these real estate companies can take on more debt, that's more than what we're looking for. It would have been pretty close in 2018, but it's quite a ways off today. This is an X on metric number five. It's something you need to dig into the company to understand in more depth. You need to know how this debt is structured. When does it come due? What rates is it at? Are there any covenants associated with it? And is it recourse or not to the parent company? These are all questions you can answer by reading through the company's filings, which are conveniently linked here on Ticker. Or you can check them out on the SEC website. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Crown Castle's average cash from operations divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. This is the first of our valuation metrics. Enterprise value looks at the company like a private business. It adds their net debt and their market cap together, giving us something closer to a private valuation. Right now, the company has a $70 billion enterprise value. We learned they produced just about $14 billion in cash from operations in their last five years. This means they produce $2.8 billion in cash from operations in a given year. When we divide that by their enterprise value, we get a 3.9 average cash from operations yield. Today, the company produced $3.1 billion in their last 12 months. When we divide that by their enterprise value, we get a 4.4% current cash from operations yield. These are both around the yield from the 10-year treasury, yet they're down from the risk premium we wanted. This means coming in on metric number six, it's an X for Crown Castle. Don't just throw the business out. You're going to want to see what our next two valuations are before you watch till the end for our rating and their combined value, which may come as a surprise. Everything we've covered so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Crown Castle. This brings us to use a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Crown Castle has been extremely predictable in their past. This may also be the case going forward for the company as they deal with long dated contracts for just a handful of customers. That's no guarantee, however, so it's up to you to figure out if this will be accurate or not. Because of their extremely high predictability, we'll use their current free cash flows. Usually, we take at least a three-year average here. Then we're going to use historical assumptions to grow these into the future. Let's assume they grow their free cash flows at 6% in each of the next 10 years. Then, in the following decade, we're going to assume that these grow at 4%, so slightly slower. We won't add in their tangible book value as that may be skewed based on how some of the accounting is done for the business. If we want a market beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, at today's valuation multiples, an estimate of Crown Castle's fair value per share is only around $35. That sounds $60 from their stock price. Keep some key points in mind. 
This discount rate already includes their huge dividend yield. Their stock price wouldn't grow by this full amount. While the company may trade favorably compared to where they have in the past, they still trade for some very high multiples. This includes an EV to EBITDA, which is a very loose multiple of 17 times. Historically, they've traded around 24 times. It's also a price to sales ratio that's just under six times. Again, while that may be cheaper than where they've been at in the last 10 years, that's relatively expensive compared to many stocks. We'll look at Guru Focus's value for the company as well. Guru Focus estimates this fair value based on where the company is at compared to its multiples and analyst estimates for the future, in addition to using their predictability rating. Right now, this comes in at $186 per share. That's almost double their current stock price. So this should be a screaming buy, right? Well, this isn't financial advice, but you need to look at the caveat. Guru Focus has this marked as a possible value trap and to think twice about it. Even though they've been very predictable, there are some worrying signs about the business, some of which we touched on, but there are also some qualities that may be changing for the business. Let's learn what these are. We're going to start with a long thesis. Number one, Crown Castle is at the forefront of an industry transition towards small cells that will be necessary with 5G networks. Number two, carriers will have to continue investing heavily in their networks as mobile data usage continues to increase by more than 30% each year in the United States, and the Internet of Things and video trends make that pace likely to continue. Number three, Crown Castle is virtually assured stable growth in its tower business. It holds long-term leases with contractual rent escalators, and its costs have similar certainty and are highly leverageable. But as we've hinted at, there are some negatives. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, Crown Castle is spending too much on small cells, which have fewer competitive advantages and lower margin profiles and returns on investments than towers. Number two, with two of the three major U.S. wireless carriers owning significant amounts of their own fiber, Crown Castle may lack a sufficient customer base to ever make its fiber very profitable. Number three, Crown Castle's big city footprint makes its towers the most susceptible to small cell disruption. Even if Crown's own small cell business is a major beneficiary, it may be too small to offset a significant reduction in tower use. There's a change in their industry and there are some tensions around it. Now it's what you've been waiting for. Let's combine these qualities with their numbers as we give a rating and put together their total fair value. In our analysis of Crown Castle stock ticker CCI, we learned the company goes two for six on our select six analysis. They've earned average returns on capital, but they've grown. They've also added a lot of debt to the business, which is not fully supported by their cash flows. Their yields don't look either attractive or unattractive compared to the 10 year treasury. They're right about in line. They trade at low multiples compared to their history, but that are relatively high compared to other stocks. The company historically has relied on some looser valuation metrics like adjusted funds from operations in order to support their dividends. These, however, are not covered by the company's cash flows. With changes in their industry and higher costs associated with debt, there could be some trouble brewing on the horizon for the company that may be a major part of the market's reaction and their declining stock price in the last few years. Our fair values gave us a pretty wide range for the business. Even though they've been pretty predictable in their past, this fair value is going to be a rough estimate. Right now, this comes in at $98 per share, with the major caveat that the highest of these, the Guru Focus estimate, also attached the warning sign that Crown Castle may be a potential value trap. When we look at our analysis, Crown Castle looks like an interesting candidate if you have variant perception on the business. If you enjoyed today's CCI stock analysis, like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and watch this next video.